Hello, everybody. Turn on the mic so everybody out there can hear me tonight. Welcome to another episode of Pod Scum. I am your host, Rex Triple X Ruger, aka David Lee Roth Jr. Diamond David Lee Roth Jr., if you will. As you can see, is there any doubt when you look at the long locks brought to you by? You want the good locks? Get the hairspray that rocks. Let me give myself one final look see here because we got a guest today that I've wanted for a while. This is a guy that's really got me excited. A guy that I put right up there in the pantheon of great front men, pretty close to myself. I mean, is there really any topping me? Of course I am, as always, the son of glam, the front man for the band. Just smoked a few grams, always going out with a bang. Mr. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, shazam, hot damn. Just so you people out there know that I am the real deal, the man with the golden voice and the silk tongue. <laughs> Ladies, that's right. Coming to you from my blue room. And uh, what do I want to say here? Um, hmm. Well, you guys all know I am the hair metal high priest, the king of sleaze. And I'll tell you, I got a good one here today. One that I am excited about. So without further ado, let me try to get this gentleman in here. And, and again, you see me working on the computer. You see me warts and all behind the scenes. This is the No Frills podcast. No cute little intro music. No animation. No little theme song. Well, maybe someday if I get to sing it. But you get to sneak peek behind the curtain. You get to see it all. You don't need frills. I'm 49 years old. I don't need frills. I need thrills. And I'm giving them to you because I am the thrill. And my guests are the thrill. If I do say so myself, I get the people on here that really matter, that I really want to talk to, and that you want to hear from. Interesting people. And we got one coming in right now, and I'm excited. I'm getting a little fanboy here, and I don't usually let that happen to me, but we'll see. We will see. So <laughs> There he is. How are you? I'm clapping for you, my brother. You're a legend to me, my friend. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I, I never live like that, but. No, I know you don't. I know you're a very humble guy. This for my pod scum audience out there that does not know, the legendary, to me, Rude Boy Remington from the most criminally, I'll say it constantly, criminally underrated band of all time, the great Urban Dance Squad. Thank you so much. <laughs> Welcome, my friend. Welcome, my friend. Well, you know what? I like to think it's a little bit of an honor for you, too, because as you can tell by the hair, you're looking at David Lee Roth Jr. <laughs> yeah. I, so good. here we are, just a couple of legendary front men, you know, shooting the breeze. Word. <laughs> David Lee Roth is no joke. David Lee Roth. Is <laughs> I got no so much to ask you, my friend. I mean, I've had a lot of guests on here, man, but you're one of the ones that I've really been looking forward to. Uh, for the aforementioned reasons, you know, I, I just think Urban Dance Squad was just such an incredible band. I mean, uh, you guys are from Holland, correct? Yeah, uh, we're Dutch. And okay. I'm basically okay. living in the city of Amsterdam, always okay. did. And okay. the other four, basically, they live in a place called Utrecht. Basically, in Dutch, on for Dutch standards, we, yep. we kind of live like 30 kilometers away from Amsterdam. But that's still a different mentality and still a different town. Yeah, um, I'm the only dude I had to travel all the time to rehearse back in the day uh, to take a train to uh, Utrecht in the center. And uh, there used to be uh, a place called the Free Floor, Freie Floor in Dutch, which means that uh, they they were kind of independent. Yep. But uh, there was like this little community there. And uh, we had um, the we were lucky to use their PA system and basically um, rehearse on the stage. With And uh, first we threw every, everybody out. We waited till they went home and then we started <laughs> the, the things. Yeah. That's and how I you guys, came. 
Now, you guys were only supposed to be just a just it was just supposed to be just a one time jam session. How did it spawn? How did it spawn into a fully realized band? Like who makes that call? Do you guys just look around at each other and say, wow, we really got something here? Well, the thing is this. I was the last to join, which meant yep. which means that DNA, he found me somewhere in Paradiso in Amsterdam going to another like this rap competition and a DJ. Okay competition with uh he was actually challenging uh the number one uh dutch uh champion dj champion who on all star fresh also known as also fresh one and um I, uh, yeah. in my book i'm writing a book oh great nothing about the crew i i have to tell you uh that maybe later but anyway he saw me there and he just just Jotted so, something on a on a on a piece of paper, and he asked me to do some rap. I I thought this guy's a fuck crazy dude, and so <laughs> I just say no. He said no, you rap for me. I'm like motherfucker. I said okay. I said listen, I'll do this once. I break it down. It's really slow and in your ear. I don't want to hear people to hear this shit. So I did. Then he started jotting even more. He told me like for a particular time i had to go and take the train to utrecht and find this free floor thing so i did i first i went home i had this girl i told her like this has happened we just came from a uh a, a, a holiday in uh tunisia mm -hmm. and uh it was summer something like that i told her like this guy's crazy but because he was not only giving me this but he said and now it's time for me to challenge the the dutch champion which went completely south because Didn't win? <laughs> no of course not because dna <laughs> is turntables just the the needle jumped and you see the, the, the that crowd was pretty hostile which yeah. meant that a lot of black people dudes over there so i said this guy gotta be an idiot so <laughs> at least three times that needle jumped and i'm like damn so i told my girl i said listen this guy asked me to go there she said what are you gonna do? I said, well, you know what? I think I'm gonna do it, even if it costs money, because I just wanted to know if this guy's an idiot or not. Yeah, yeah. So I yeah. left that particular time, and uh, I saw him at the f no. The the door was closed. He told me to go to the load in, was basically on the uh, uh, on the side of the building. Mm -hmm. So I was just knocking on these metal doors and nobody answered so i figured this guy's an idiot so i left then i heard suddenly the door go oh when when open and he he was there he said yo i said okay so i jumped on a li little what i consider like some kind of stairs and then mm -hmm. immediately on that stage and i saw like four dudes i never saw before but i can tell you that from the moment I saw them. They they were kind of these were strong personalities. Yeah, yeah, extremely strong. Yeah, so I figured, okay, this this must be something. So they started. They were already in a jam. They greeted me, blah blah, and you mm -hmm. know, and DNA said this root boy so and so, and uh, they started jamming. And I, the, the only thing I was doing because most of these rappers they don't think in songs. I, I did, so I had already a couple of songs ready. And uh, the only thing I was doing is listening to the jams, what the hell they are doing, and figuring out, okay, my my song A could be with that type of jam. Right, and, right. And said, Making everything and fit. They, then they looked at me. They said, and how, how, what do you think? I said, well, play that other thing back again. That's called Struggle for Jive. So mm -hmm. I did that old Struggle for Jive thing for it. That was a complete song that I used to... Uh, I used to write this. I wrote it actually for a crew called Born Free MCs. Mm -hmm. I was in that crew. I left them because, you know, and DNA knew them too. But uh, they never let me go again because uh, they felt like this is the guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they and made a good how, decision. That's how it started. But uh, I wasn't there. That period you're talking about that was way before I came, met DNA because somehow i think one of them like the this crew was called not urban dance court it was there was a big 
squad called the Google Squad, where they did trouble mm -hmm. funk type of things with maybe more than 10 people in that crew. And every now and then they got like this an MC that would do things, blah, blah, blah. I wasn't there. And uh, I think they kind of played with, with the idea to make what do we consider the smaller squad. And um, when I just joined them, then it started to be the small squad, also known as the Urban Dance. Yep. So yep. Uh, I, I don't know anything about who really came with the idea because maybe DNA can tell you more about that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not the guy to, because he he saw me and he invited me and I was What do in. you think? Um, now you guys have obviously, have obviously dipped a toe uh, with your sound into numerous genres. I mean, rock, alternative, hip hop, funk, yeah. jazz. You can hear elements of a lot of different sounds of music. Yeah, true that. So, shall yeah. I tell you yeah. something honest? Sure, sure. The thing, the thing is this. I always I always was irritated about the fact that a lot of uh, bands or crews came with that same, you know, uh, statement that right. they were using. We didn't do that at all. What we did right. was jam. What we actually did was basically tap into anything that we liked from the beginning when we were younger. Right. So Tres Manos, also known as Rene from Bonnefeld, the guitar yep. player, used to basically beef hard uh, Nick Cave, Robert Johnson, of course, Hendrix. Yeah. And you, you get stuff like that. Influences all over have, the place. Yeah. Then you might have the other dude, the, the guy behind the drums, listening basically a Led Zapp hat. Um, oh, okay. But John Bonham inspired. Yeah, listen, yeah. listen to. He was listening all the time to Soul and James Brown. Then you got Silvano, who takes everything from that with him. Mm -hmm. Um, to make it short, all these people will kind of if you if you you know decide to work with each other, they will have the freedom to basically show what's inside of them. And immediately, sure, if sure. one or two people start, the other will start also, so, and so forth, right. and so forth, and so on. And that's that's what happened. So it was an organic, natural way of making mu making sounds. Actually, yeah, yeah. DNA. If you know DNA, he's basically anything that I know. Somehow he knows. He basically had got a lot of records back in the yeah. day. He was the a man. Final. Yeah. Oh fuck! No joke. <laughs> so. What you get is a group of people that will do whatever they feel like, and the other follows. It's right. just it's just a matter of who starts with something, and then right. then they they just adapt to that. And the it's very important because it should be like a playground for children, where uh where should I say the the the, the, the sound and the noise counts, and it really doesn't matter what it is who comes with the idea later on. You figure the shit out. You're like, damn, that was kind of cool. The other stuff, take it out. And then you start basically forming what you consider a song. And that's how we did it. And we weren't like, oh, now we got this Led Zepp type of thing. Let's do Led Zepp. It, it just ha it. We never talked about these things. But then again, everybody knew like, yo, oh, right. I like that record or so. We, we discussed it about like when we drank coffee or something. Right. But right. on on that stage on on at the free floor it was nothing but okay, let's make some noise. Right, right. And 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 I'm not saying this just because you're here. I mean, I have been I, you know, I've been flying the flag for you guys for years. Um uh and uh, uh do you think if you had if had just been starting Urban Dance Squad in today's era, and of course the music business itself has changed a lot in selling records, but do you think that you, you would have found uh, uh, a, a bigger audience and more commercial success. Do you think back then maybe the world just wasn't ready for your sound? Because it seemed to really think, go over I, a lot of people's heads. I think this is the case. And this is just uh, something that I just always saw. Yeah. We were way ahead. And sure. if you come too early, you know, the, the road is very steep. You right. know, the right. road is very steep. If you come on time, the road is with you. You're going down uphill very with ease, you know? Right. Uh, 
I think that's the thing with us. But you see, we didn't even want to make records because we started in 86. This is very important this year. Right, right. And the first two years, we just didn't want to make a record. We didn't never trust that. And we didn't trust anybody. And um, it was more like to play it live. Then to a point, we came, had the idea, you know what? Okay, we take pick up this glove. We, we're going to do this. And uh, yeah. Then, yeah. you know, I could, could continue with this, but it might you might ask me later. But um, Urban Land Squad is a group of people back then that um, even though the personalities were different, especially uh, when you deal with emotions, we had one agenda, and was that was the noise, the sound. And we were very tight with that, which meant that these agreements we made musically, mm -hmm. that was basically the our throne and our kingdom. But inside the kingdom, it could be that any member had different opinions about certain things in life. This is very right. important to, to point out because right. you see a lot of people will tell you this crap that uh they are family so and so it's it's to, if that's the case then that's the case because if i believe i be, i'm a beetle hat since i was three years old because of my dad and right. the beatles to me they were really friends you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. they, they sure. were very yeah. but the clash who i admire extremely uh oh, sure. was the other yeah. way around you know so we kind of fit in that that mold of the clash because in in, in two way in two, for two reasons one the clash also uh had these strange characters but second they believed in any type of thing that was sounds good that sounded good so mm -hmm. that's what i believe in i believe that um if if somebody comes with an idea it sounds good it is good right, and you have right. to work that it out you consider that songs but that's how I, I think about it. And also the clash when they when they started Sandinista, right? Mm -hmm. They kind of made this <laughs> this triple record to get out of CBS. Now it's right. like Sony MG. Right. right. So they were thinking, well, you know what? You are choking us, but we're gonna just drop this triple album. And back in the day, and this is this is real, this is fact, 80% of Maybe 70, 70%, 70 which is a big percentage. Sure. Didn't like that album as uh, the critics because they felt, and this is now very important what I'm going to mention. Okay. They felt like the Clash were more than like one band sounding like 10 bands, which was something negative. That The same thing went for the Urban Dance Club. The people, certain, to, to a certain point with the, maybe the fourth album, Planet Ultra, they said, yeah, they sound like this and that. We're sick and tired of it. They have no consistent uh, sound. Just So when Rage Against the Machine after six years came, and I will not you know, irritate you with uh, you know, uh, what that history was, but Rage Against the Machine, when they came with that record, everybody said, that's, a, that's the, 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 like the horizon, the panorama of their sound yep. was Highly acclaimed smaller. album, yep. And everybody understood that because it was a sound that they could understand. Right. With us, we were the crazy dudes, like sounding like this, sounding like that, sounding so and so. And it, we got flat for that. The same that they did with Sandinista from, from The Clash. I always think about that bracket, especially that bracket, because nowadays, 80% of the same motherfuckers, they, they claim that it's a, a masterpiece. Listen. When that record came out, I already knew it was a masterpiece. Right. So I don't right. need to depress to tell right. me this. Right. Anything. Now, when you look, you know, when you look back at Mental Floss for the Globe, which was, um, uh, in my opinion, just as you had aforementioned, uh, a masterpiece. Do you look at that as a masterpiece, though? You know, can you look, look at your at, own work at, and see that it's a masterpiece? Yeah, funny is the funny thing is that uh, I'm a very strange dude. When I make the records, it's very important. When I write the songs, it's very important to me. Right. But nobody is there, right? Only the group. So mm -hmm. when we finally recorded the record, I was like, great. I knew with that record, nobody sounded like. I just knew. Come what may, I knew. Yeah. I was ready for this. 
But the point is, after a while, when you start to, to play these songs, you think about new songs. What happened throughout the years was that certain records after this type of, uh, should I say, method, I kind of picked up the record again and said, holy damn, how did we do this? Because yeah. looking back, after all these years, you look back and you're like, wow, what? it's actually no joke. It's not, right. It's no, it's funny. not. No, and, it's not. And, and but that's that's how I see things. I I work still work with this because I'm in a crew called the Cold Vein, which is a noise guitar yep. band with me on it. Yep. The thing is this: um, I don't look back. I look at two new songs. The guys are the same, uh, with this mentality. Um, and later on, I look again to the old record because. I think like Stephen Melkmus, you know Stephen Melkmus from Pavement. Uh yes, you know yep, Pavement? yep. Okay, yep. he said he said they asked him a particular question, basically the same thing, and he said, oh, "Well, the thing is, the best way to do this is to move on, and maybe later you look back." And that, I totally agree with this because yeah. once you have to make it out something out of nothing, that's the only that's the most important thing. Right. And right. when you made it, it's time to think about other things and do this thing live. And at the same time, try to figure out new ideas. And that's how I, that's my mentality about everything. But then again, looking so back. When you on guys, the, so yeah, when you guys yeah. are making that album and you've got and you've got five guys in there with such eclectic tastes and such diverse musical taste uh who kind of takes the reins like when you get five guys with that many creative tastes who's doing what are you the main lyricist is everybody contributing as yeah, a whole yeah i'm basically i'm taking all the titles and lyrics the only uh title i didn't really pick up because was uh because of the fact that i felt back then i didn't know how to uh name the record normally i would do it but then it it was dropped into the crew and said okay what do you think about uh, title then i said something about the globe then i was thinking about a dental floss but it was <laughs> dna <laughs> but, no, but the thing is this it was dna who came with because he got his workplace right he's very yeah. smart with it. So he said, what about mental floss for the glow? I said, oh, shit, this is the one. That's it right there. But with yeah. life and perspective, it was me. Because yeah. I was more focused about, like, uh, how do you consider that? Um, like a theme. And basically, the main idea about the whole record was, like, life and perspectives of a genuine crossover. That was for right, me. Right, I, I was I was standing on that thing. And the other records could be some somebody might drop a title. But with the lyrics, and these titles are all mine and all the lyrics. And I, now, you know, insisted, like, yeah. But now with DJ <laughs> DNA, uh, with DNA, excuse me, with DNA being a uh, 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 the DJ of the group, uh, does he make all the choices on what you guys uh, use as far as sampling goes? Is that all him? And, yeah, and, and unless, unless I have an idea, and I just kind of combine it with his ideas, because lyrically every now and then especially with the later records i told him listen i'm going to say this and that get that record so you can cut it in for what i'm actually saying but really done by this dude right uh, and that was just digging in the craze getting knowing rap records and do something right but in general right. it's especially the first two albums we kind of build around dna's um snippets so we build the song around his snippet right or he cut or his like like a uh, record idea we always listen to what he was doing I'm like yo this is... and then we played around it we kind of made it made a song around him mm -hmm. whereas like planet ultra for for reasons very understandable he wasn't there anymore so we think we already knew how to write these songs Right. But with him, we used to build the song around him. That's different. Right. And second, what you can tell about DNA, this is one of the reasons and I always keep in mind, is that um, with him, you get a different form of hybrid music. Uh, let me explain, try to explain this. Okay, please. 
please. Because his mentality and his his way of thinking is so left fieldish that mm -hmm. the the danger is with him. It's not in the guitar player. It's not in me even. It's in the DJ because this dude he comes with ideas because of his the way he approaches things out of the blue is mm -hmm. in that sense so unique. The danger is with him. And what people should never forget, he wasn't a DJ alone. He was basically a musician on turntable that got embedded in the traditional instrumentalists together. And that's mm -hmm. a difference because a lot of people think you drop a DJ in and that's it. Forget it. You're not going to make it because you do not, they do not understand the whole MacGyver of it. Right, they have to right. have a character that's musical. So Jam Master J is musical because Jam Master B J from Run DMC was a one man band, right? For yep. for that, yep. for that, for what they wanted to do, that was the thing. For us yep. to have musical instrument like instrumentalists with a DJ as an instrument, that's totally different. Because the dude will do certain things where the guitar player will adapt on the drums. Right. The, and I'll finally, I'm thinking, huh, good. I even jot some, you know, some notes or I do it at home. Right. And um, come back. But DNA was, especially with the two records, the first two records and later on the, the fifth, the one I got him back. Uh, so, uh, because I, I, I acknowledge that uh, the group lost um, a very important force, and that was him. So now yes. I'm doing Google Plays UDS. They basically asked me alone in France. It started with these friends' bookers. They they figured me out. And you know, I didn't know that there was footage about me doing straight out of Compton uh, <laughs> on the internet. And later on, I figured this is too big for me alone. Yeah. Yeah. Not that I can't do it, but I think it's it's not a statement if I do it alone. So I asked DNA back, and he was very happy to do so because, you see, things happened in the past, but I feel that with these things, when you, when you're years, years later, you, you have to understand what it's all about. Right. And it's not about me. It's about an idea where he has his own legacy, where I have my legacy. Right. And he brought me in the group. You understand? It's yep, very yep. it was him, nobody yep. else. I was the last to join because of this dude. So I have to pay him back. That's how I think about right. things. Right. I have to pay him back. So I gave him the crown. I'm merely a lieutenant, but I'm good at what I'm doing. Right. And I'm telling him he's the king. He's the grandmaster now. I gave him all that credit because I felt yeah. that it was time for him. And uh, I'm, I'm a strange dude, to be honest. I know exactly if they attack me, I will fucking tell you do this and that because I'm pissed off that. Yeah. But in general, I don't want to be the boss. It's bullshit. Because right. I know You're my right. way. I will find my way. I don't need to right. be the boss. Right. I will find my way in a crew anyway. Now you guys are doing it out. You, you guys are, are are have done this recent resurgence of, as you mentioned, uh, you and D and DJ DNA going out and doing stuff uh, as as and, and uh, revisiting those Urban Dance Squad songs. Um, I know back then Trace Manos on guitar was uh, there was a little bit of an age gap between him and the rest of the guys. Um, but is there any reason why matter. the rest of the guys are there, are there? Are there any reason why the rest of the guys aren't involved? Let me tell you, I'll be on fucking honest. I'm maybe I'm, I might be the most honest musician on the planet right now. So I'm not yeah, going to tell please, you any yeah. bullshit story, but the truth, the fact. The okay. thing is this: it is a bigger story that I'm, uh, I'm I'm dwelling on in my book, but I will keep it short for you and for this. Your answer, your question is this. My answer is this: they had the opportunity, but Tress is a specific, different person that I uh, respect yeah. because. Uh, Tresmanus always was the guy who knew exactly what he wanted to do. Yeah. So when he left the group, that was clear. You understand? Yep. He's yep. not. There's no. There's no hazy shit about it. And that's the same with him. He he 
he thumbed up to me and DNA and said, uh, keep doing it. But he, he don't, he doesn't feel he must be involved. He had those days for him are over. Um, and he's very clear with that message. The yeah. other two, I'm not really happy about. Let me say Sofano could be one of these guys, but it didn't happen. He, he had some ideas against DNA and they had some quarrels there. So I had a quarrel with him. Uh, uh, the drummer to us, he's basically KIA because he's working for Sony BMG behind a desk. And I guess I was in the wrong crew because an urban dance squad dude could never be like an industry man. Magic stick has gone because, corporate. Magic stick has gone corporate on us. Big time, big time. <laughs> and if you see, if you see his roster of musicians, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm not even going to dwell on this one. But it's far planets away from what we are. Yeah, and yeah. also that that shit is about money, okay? Yeah, and status. If you if you want that, you please do. But yeah, it's impossible. But then again, I'm telling you straight up because I told you I was a strange dude. Yeah, yeah. If these dudes come to me one of these days, just as hypothetically, and ask me, you want to do this? I said, no problem. But one yeah. thing, though, it will never be like back in the day because, listen, you cannot tell me anything you feel. That goes for the drummer, actually. For the yeah. others, and me and DNA, we, we are very, in that sense, tight. Yeah. So. That drummer, I would tell him basically to play and shut the hell up, especially when you think you can produce that. And I know you can't. So shut up. It's DNA. I'd rather go. I'd rather go with a different producer or DNA. I'm not going with this dude. He, this dude thinks he's he knows everything. Well, basically, the truth is me and DNA gave you the pepper as an ingredient in that stuff. Yeah. Threat is a skillful extremely talented guitar player with Phenomenal. his own background. Yeah. You know, you have Silvano on stage and certain things cannot be beaten. He, this guy cannot be, you know, in that sense, never play second fiddle, but in the, in the cre in the creative process, it's right. the whole thing is different. And right. I will not talk too much about myself, but like, again, again, I said, DNA is a, is a very important dude in that sense. Right. Well, you and, guys, and, you, you guys being a European band, and I've seen footage of you guys throwing down on stage back in the day, and even the stuff that you're currently doing with the new musicians, and you guys are a tremendously great live act. But do you think, though, that uh, 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 do you think that part of the reason that held you guys back in the day was breaking in in America? I know you guys did a spot on Jay Leno. You guys had some TV appearances in the states. But uh, uh, were, were the American audiences I mean, I, not receptive? No, they were receptive. The thing they is, it's receptive. our own fault. It's, it, it was our own fucking fault. That's why I write my book. Because what you do not understand, and I'm talking very blunt here. Yeah. There was this... This, 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 this universe mm -hmm. in the group where I consider... Uh, most of the time, the, 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 the members weren't that intelligent enough. Right. Let, they were very intelligent, but not when it had to be done on what I consider street PR. Yeah. Smell the coffee at 12 o'clock when you know, shut up and do yeah. this because it's for a bigger thing. Right. And, and free, you know, if you do certain things, you get more freedom. But the, sure. the, the question is, the question is, what do you have to do? And don't take anything because then you're nothing but a, a glove puppet. That's not right. urban dance But at the same time, we made, and I'm going to be blunt here, uh, with the second album, we didn't want to do spring, spring break. I wanted to because my a &R, who happened to be one of the best guys I've ever seen in the industry, his mm -hmm. name is Tom Annis. Tom Annis. He asked me, I was driving this convertible with him because I was very notorious for asking people to drive me around. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes they didn't have time, but they still did it for me. So he said, and I wanted to see the big, like the more dangerous part of the town or the more, the most beautiful parts. Yeah. So he asked me, Root Boy, what do you think about uh, staying a neck another year doing Mandel Floss again? And I know you're going to break. 
So I said, no problem. I'll do it. He said, you, you're you going to do at least a year again. I said, no problem. So he got my vote. But immediately after that, after maybe five, no, that's not true, maybe 30 seconds, I told him, you've got another problem. You got to ask the others. Right, right. So they kind of did. And Tress felt that uh, it was time to go to to uh, to Europe. So uh, Schultz said the same. Especially Schultz was to me the main agitator. Um, and uh, Silvano, who, who happens to be the type of dude that will follow whatever is peaceful for the crew. Right. DNA was blunt because he felt that he wanted to see his girl and that she was pregnant. So I was left alone and I told him and I and I almost quote, I said, let the record show that I did not agree, but there was this strange rule in the urban escort where the majority goes, anything goes. So right. that was it. That was to me the most biggest mistake urban escort made because you that was a message basically to uh, Richard Swearett, who happened to be uh, the new a &R for us. He felt like first he wanted to, uh, to you know, change the, the single called Bureaucrat of Flacker Street, which right. we didn't agree with. Great so song. They, we, that's the Bureaucrat of Flacker So we left uh, the company. But we also didn't want to think spray. But I think that's the crucial mistake the Urban Dashboard had made. Because for this crew coming from Europe, a different market, we simply had to do that shit. Yeah. Then later yeah. on, you can tell, and we did it. That's our own yeah. mistake. Yeah. So that's my answer to you. That yeah. in this case, the American audience, the American audience is not at fault. It's us. Yeah. So I'm what is the right. reason? What's the reason right now? Uh, at this stage of your life and at this stage of your career, why a book right now? Is it something inside of you that's telling you I've got to get my story out? Yes, because I, I was kind of, how should I explain this? If you're in a crew and your, your loyalty is very strong, mm -hmm. even though to certain points I told you this was a very strange crew, first of all, we kept everything inside, not outside. This is the right. reason why you ask me certain questions. Right. Because we never were never really helpful to the press, but we were never really helpful to anybody. Right. So for some sort of strange reasons of uh, so certain antics, we didn't do that. But for me, I was bombarded as that spokesperson. I kind of felt like after a while what it really meant. It meant that I have to basically make chocolate out of nothing, right? And 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 basically put myself on the, you know, next to anything than my soul. And after all these, this like more than a decennium, than more than a uh, decennium, I figured no, it's pretty convenient for certain people in the crew that I get the flack. To be the guy, that rude boy dude, that is always uh, very different and difficult to the industry, which was true, and for a reason I did that. Um, that they could get scot free, and I did it. And right. if you look at me, I'm working, doing strange thing in the restaurant, and I'm not bitching about it because I'm, I'm the type of dude that's a hard worker. But at the same time, I never dwelt in the industry because I hate these people. They can right, never, right. what they have to offer to me is that I basically sell my soul and be one of them. That will never happen. Right. So I'd rather be right. flat broke, okay? I'd rather be fucking broke than be one of these dudes. But the, at the same time, it hurts, which means that a lot of people don't know nothing about the Urban Dance Squad, and it's convenient for certain players in the group. This is the reason why I felt, right. you know, this time... I showed my loyalty for Decennia to you guys. And because of certain things where I, you know, I, you might ask me, could ask me later, because we had a little baby reunion for ourselves. Yeah. Later on, I just stopped that because I was sick and tired of talking, uh, especially I'll, I'll come to that later. But anyway, 
it was for me time to tell people, okay, first of all, you people do not understand what was going on in Urban Dance Court, but I do. Right. I said, it's about time to put the record straight when it comes to certain issues and, and I uh, things where I had to show my loyalty extra, but got all the flat for it. Right. And I'm tired right. of this shit. Right. Because if you if you read my book, you will realize, wait a minute. I never thought about this. Oh, oh now I understand why they did that. Yeah. Oh, so this rude boy dude, there is sometimes a reason why he's doing so so difficult. Right. Because right. I was basically, how do you consider that? Um, what's the name? What's the term for it? Um the integrity of the crew. Because okay. that's my that's I'm the guy who have to talk for four other guys. Right, right. So you're doing the you're doing the press. You're the front man. You're the face of the band. And not only that, I have to think for them. I cannot fucking. Yeah. You see, the difficulty is this: Tress, who is not the guy to do so, but is smart. I have to talk for him too. I have to talk for this this drummer dude. I have to talk for Silvano. I have to talk for DNA. Even though I know DNA can manage himself very well. But in the group, it was me. They asked me specifically to do this. In my so book for as fans, well. That. So for your fans, how soon will we see this book? How far along is the project? How, how far into it are well, you? Well, uh, it's cool. It, um, um, it, the, the difficulty of my book is that it's so much in my head. Yeah. That's it's a lot of work because I know yeah. so much. Yeah, right, right. It, it's going to be a book that's a that's a a crossbreed between Catcher in the Rye, okay, me, me, Young Kramer. I don't know if you know that book. It's a Dutch guy. That guy was fantastic in the sixties. Okay, and and basically a little bit of Mein Kampf. Okay, okay. So it's an idiotic book, but yeah. what's interesting for you guys is what happened there, because you do not know, and right, right. Certain elements come back where you say, really. And they had to do, for instance, with a particular album. What what was the reason that certain people left, and why is this album like this? Is you know this is this is how how we do things, and right. and people do not know what was going on in the Urban Dance Court, which is again another mistake of the Urban Dance Court. Because if the Urban Dance Court used their legacy now and back in the past. And give more insights of the group, then I wouldn't have even have to talk about me. Right. But because I made my book, then you realize he's talking about more things than himself. And right. you will see right. what I am because I, as a young kid, I was like this. And uh, it's very funny too, and sometimes sad. And I'm, I'm just a, sometimes, see, I, I'm a tragic figure too, I, I guess, but I don't feel shamed. I'm just not. Like the average American uh, recording artist who feels like, yeah, I'm the I'm the biggest cheese in town, and and you right. got all these liars now and then, and and even the guys that I like, it's they are American, which means that they talk more about being on their own pedestal than telling you the truth, which man means that I'm a human being, you are a human being, you call me up. And I answer you as a human being. Right, right. I have no fucking agenda here. I'm not with the, with these yes men and all these suit and ties like they do. I, I know the culture in the States is like this. I And right. I, I respect that. Right, right. But that doesn't mean I'm going to follow that same path. I'm, I've told you I'm a weirdo. I'm just, I don't know why there's this. I just. So will we see the book? So will we see the book within the next year? Oh, How yeah. far along? So, yes. So it will be end of beginning of the new year. Okay. Because I had a talk with one of the guys I just uh, pointed out to, to be my extra editor. And I have a crew of people because I write it myself. No ghost writing. Huh? Right, I do it right. myself. Uh, because I felt nobody can do it except me because it's an idiotic idea. I want, you know, to, to crystallize this idiotic idea. Uh, second, um, they, so they they talked with me and they said, uh, listen, Patrick, because of due to Corona and all that shit, 
they have a, a lack of paper. They lack paper. And so they kind of threw it to the next year because end of this year, I was supposed to have my deadline, like in for sure, November, maybe yeah. even October. But they told me, don't worry. It's, it's not a bad idea because they're going to put me at crossing borders when that thing comes out. And that's a fucking good thing. So I'm not really, you know, complaining. Will there and be I an get, audio version? Will there be an audio book version? It's always, it's that is always possible. Yeah. I'd love to hear you reading it. That would be great. You know, I'd love to hear these rock biographies when they're read by the authors. Cause I think what you say is true. Nobody can really tell your story and know where to put emphasis when you're telling the story, like the author can, the person who lived it, you know, I mean, yes. I love these, I, I love these rock biographies where the, where the actual person actually narrates it themselves and not go get somebody else that, you know, like a voiceover kind of guy, you know? And, and, and let me put it, let me put it also this way at the same time, where it's needed, I will give credit to any member of the crew. It depends what we're talking about. Yeah. But the more explosive moments, I will fucking be extremely blunt. Yeah. Yeah. Because you have to understand. We, I believe that music in itself, if people participate and become a like a collective is the most beautiful thing on this planet. Yeah, absolutely. And so, yeah. But to get there, to be working with it, or even after what you've done, that's a bitch. Because yeah. it, it depends. You know, even the Beatles, there were these riffs, right? Because, because Lennon finally found his, basically his muse, his, his island. He was unhappy before that. Mm -hmm. Then you have McCartney who kept the crew, tried to get the crew together. Harrison, who felt in a little way that his talent as a writer was, you know, was not seen too in the right way. Right. Now, not appreciated. Was, was, Ringo was the type of guy, just like Silvana, who felt what everything is peaceful for the crew will do. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Make no but, waves. Right. But even those two who considered brothers. Lennon and McCartney. Right. Yeah. split. That's the whole that's yep. basically the story. Yeah. So if you take the Beatles as the main example of how it must be done, we are fucked for real because in this life, if you if you find people, you must be very lucky that you can get that you get close with these people and yep. that these people understand you. If you have five particular different person that's going to be difficult brother because yeah you and i might be in a crew and we find each other you know like hand in glove emotionally mentally musically yeah. what about the rest of that crew that's in the collective that's the, right. also the question right right it, people talk about marriages like a marriage well i never use that term because i, I kind of think it's corny but because they always try to explain themselves. Yeah, it's, it's worse than a marriage. And ah, I think it's crap. The thing is this. Human communication and human integrity is sometimes a bitch with each other. It depends sure. on the players. Yeah, yeah. It depends on the players. Because I could go on the street right now with you and finally find two other dudes and say, hey, we're basically alike. You understand? That's luck. Sure. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's luck. That's nothing yeah. but you you were lucky to find these people. Yeah. But go block around, try to find other two other people. Right. It might right. be like that. It right. might not be like that. Right. And that's life. Urban Dance Squad is an honest band for the simple reason that they came together, they felt each other in like uh, in the same way how they, they felt things that that were, uh, how do you can say, uh, a, a good thing. Because nowadays I have problems with my words, but <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> at the same time, they would, their mentality in life is totally different. Right. Politically, for sure. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you take secular Raja from, from uh, Rage Against the Machine, I'm going, I'm coming to New York to my mother and my sister next week. I'm going to see that show. I already have the tickets. Oh, great, great. But but the point is this. Even Zach, 
Chuck D from Earth Public Enemy told me specifically because I'm very close with him. Uh, yeah. Said, uh, you and Zach LaRocha are just one of the same cloth. Mentally, emotionally, the same cloth. Yeah. Because he said, and he said, it's funny. It's really funny. But um, even Zach LaRocha had problems in rage because they, even in the crew, it seems like they, they didn't want to understand him. Right. Like, they, they mocked him for, yeah, he's very serious, all his political, blah, blah. They are in the same crew. Now yeah. they're together again. Yeah. You, you, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Sekla, yeah. Sekla Racha, he was suffering after this, this rage thing. Because yeah. ask yourself a question. Why didn't he make solo tracks or so? He did. But at the same time, the Americans don't give a fuck. Right. That's because that's that's because people do not understand him. Right. Then suddenly he's back in in, in rage, which is a good thing, and Love everybody it. jumped up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's how life is. So 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 uh, you had spoken earlier about uh, uh, about the first time that you got together with the guys and they wanted you to rap, which you seemed uncomfortable with. But yet when people look at the band, you know, they see your vocal delivery and, you know, for lack well, of a better term, they've labeled you as a rapper. Right? Let me explain this. Okay. That What you're talking about, that element yeah. was way yeah. before Urban Dance Corp. That was okay. in like 1982. I was in a okay. scum with one of my okay. best friends. And they asked me because uh, the message came out by Furious Five and Grandmaster Flash. Yep. And I love Melly yep. Mel. And that record was so good. So I figured when they asked me, you should rap also. I said, no, because I was singing. Because I felt if I need, if I want to do it, it needs to be like the message. So I didn't see that. Then Uncle J came out with the radio record way before that. I figured, motherfucker. Did, this is the green sign because now I finally realized that I have to be involved now. So I started rapping. So I, when I was a rapper way before the urban escort, that's how DNA found me. I was a rapper right. that this is, so I came to him because we were in the hip hop community to put it like the early days. And he said, uh, I, I told you this story. So that's the reason why he got me into the crew. Because they, they wanted right. a rapper as a front man, but one who understands right, right. everything of rock and roll. And I did because my dad was in the best group of Suriname. As a, I, I saw my, fa my father on television in Suriname when I was three years old. Yeah. And, and that dude was one of the best, of, basically the best of the whole country. So uh, I, I don't know. I, I, you know? So what you're talking about is I had a confrontation with myself in the urban escort where I felt that a lot of white people were there and not so much black people. And I felt, you know, guilty about it, which meant that I, I had hallucinating battles with myself in the group. Yep. And that made it also difficult uh, for them to, to deal with me. Yeah. Because I felt, I felt like, why are so many black people not loving this right and i always saw a lot of white people which is no problem to me because i basically i don't see color but at the yeah. same time it was like why is this and people were always felt from the urban dance squad because we were so vanguard that black people said no nah, this is not black music so i also had to carry that stone that boulder yep. on my show yeah you know and all these things frustrated me i had a lot of frustration there so when you committed to, uh, so when you committed uh, to, uh, to 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 fronting the band and 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 actually, I was the rapper already. Yeah, and actually, ra and actually rapping the lyrics. Who were guys you had mentioned, uh, um, Melly Mel and Chuck D? Did you have other hip hop influences? I know earlier you mentioned the Beatles and the uh, Clash. Ultra, Ultra Magnetic MCs, especially them. Yeah. I love them because in my book I dwell upon it because Greg Nice and. Came with Tila Rock and Tila Rock, guys who witnessed us on the stage in the free floor rehearsing. And that was that show from Tila Rock that night. And he checked and then he nodded his head. Yeah. And then he left. He was a nice dude, a very yeah. good rapper. 
Uh, but Greg Nice came to me, and Greg Nice said, "You know what?" He said, "You remind me. You guys remind me of something." I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "Do you know the ultramagnetic MCs?" I, I jumped in the air. I said, yeah. What? I have the <laughs> Do I know we, him? <laughs> we, hey, we talk about 86, 87, right? Yeah, yeah. Don't forget. This very yeah. important. Yep. So I was, damn, really? He's talking about the ultra like. He said, you, you kind of remind me of him. This is what he said when he saw us. And what, I probably, because of they had the first version of traveling at a speed of thought where they used this Louis Louis track. Yep. And these slow beats with you remember do you know that song? Yes, 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 yep, yep. Oh man, that was the first one they came on next plateau. Chuck yeah. D would always mock them, uh, make jokes out of them saying, Oh, this is the crew with the most singles. <laughs> which, which meant that that they had no record. They right, only right, right. Like, <laughs> All singles. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's funny, it's funny. So um that's that's a funny thing. So it was especially ultra magnetic MCs, but Basically, L Cool J, Ultra Magnetic MCs. Uh, later on, EPMD, I liked a lot. Uh, Love him. The Me guy, too. the guy whose heart you can never beat is Rakim. I love him. The goat. Yeah. Yeah, that's the best man to me. Ever. With Eminem, Eminem lyrically will destroy you in a particular way. Yeah. So Eminem yeah. is like basically the top. But the funny thing is, it is basically Rakim when it comes to poetry because he's more poetic it, that right. dude is the best man i've ever heard and so it's not only the voice but so back in the 90s when you're uh are the you know the end of the 90s the 2000s when bands like uh well uh when bands like corn and limp biscuit are infusing that sound in there is it driving you crazy almost to think like god damn we were doing this 10 years ago and people weren't jumping on board, but now, because there was a time around the end of the 90s, early 2000s, when that rap rock fusion, those kind of bands that I just mentioned, were getting very, very popular. And that was all of a sudden like the trendy sound to have. Remember Limp Bizkit and Corn? They got really big. But you guys were doing that long before. Did it drive you crazy and make you think like, God damn, if we were here right now, this would be us? It, let me put it this way, because I told you I was a strange dude. Yeah. I'm a strange man. I just... I don't feel no, uh, I have no problem with that. The only thing is I do, I do not want people to lie at me and, or shove something under the, under the carpet. But I, I can't live with that because somehow I'm a funny guy, I guess. I just, I think that the universe, it's a good thing to have a little place there. And that somebody is looking on us or at me personally and say, hey, man, we know who you are. Don't worry about it. And yeah. I, it, it comforts me. It suits me. Yeah. Um, I don't like lies. That's all. And and I don't like people telling me rage starts. No, rage didn't start at all. We were in 86. And right. we did all these things they were doing. The right. point was we chose a different direction for Men of Loss. It happens to be mm -hmm. our first album. A premiere where we figured let's make from no kid a different thing and that's how it started because it also uh, made that uh, uh, certain people kind of have question marks about us because they were always waiting on a record then one part said oh man incredible that they go a different route than what we normally used to see them do live and the other crew was like why aren't they not playing the recorded it in the hard way Mm -hmm. uh, we had a track that co was called Let Me Guide You That's that speed metal Everything in it Breaking it down And back to the speed It was the weirdest shit ever yep. But we figured now It didn't come it came on the record It did not Because uh, Sean Marie We believe in Sean Marie Yards Where he figured now Maybe we should leave that Or maybe the next time And that's how we did it Yep But look coming back On, on what you asked me I just don't want to be lied at. Right. Okay. And and uh, all the other stuff I can I can handle and deal with. Because somehow I feel that I'm the guy who's gonna win somehow. I, I mean sure. not in a way career-wise, maybe, but somehow people will respect me even more. And it's about yeah. that respect that I'm gonna need. Um 
I have no, life is like this, right? One guy comes first and he comes over the finish line a little bit later than the guy who started way too late, but right. he's the first one over the, over the, over the finish line. Right. Life is like that. So, life. so in you guys' songs, um, uh, you've used, um, uh, the term and, uh, um, I, I want to get it uh, exactly right here and have you explain uh, wh what these terms meant. Now, I think I have a pretty good understanding of, of what you meant, but when you refer to people in the songs as ducks and Clydes, what does that exactly mean? Is that people that just uh, aren't getting it? it? No, yeah. And yeah. At the same time, the term Clyde, they used to do that in the late 50s, 60s for a rock and roll. Somebody who hates rock and roll was considered a Clyde. Okay. That's why I okay. used it. Okay. Sex, so specifically because he hates rock and roll. Okay. Uh, second, the a duck <laughs> is basically it's a nice animal. I so had to know, rude boy. I have these are the questions that the people need to know, rude boy. Uh, that's been bugging me forever, but I I, I always thought we that can, I, had... I consider you a duck if you're slow. Yeah. If you yeah. do not understand what really yeah. going on, you're not picking up on it. Right. Right. So. I consider them ducks, which is basically Clyde's too, because most of them interchangeable. They also hate rock and roll, and right, that specifically, right. that's the only uh, arrow I I throw at my own black people, because right. rock and roll is black. They suckers do not understand, so right. I consider them Clyde's. I took that term from the '50s, '60s to tell you you're a rock and roll hater. Yeah. So and I don't. Right. I believe that rap is hybrid music and is rock and roll if you do right. it the right way nowadays i don't you know it depends on what we're talking about and who right. we're talking about but most of them are suckers to me i, I can't even listen to that crap i'm trying but right i, know. I, I believe I know. still good good rap music right i think that in that sense kendrick lamar is no joke in that sense i like yeah, him right yeah I, I don't like these mumble rappers right i fucking hate me those. neither nope no I don't. I, I do not understand what the, where the urgency is. I just don't. Yeah, I have a son it's who does hip hop. I, I have a son who does. I have a son who does hip hop too, and uh, it's very hard for me to get into anything new. I, I I seem to be stuck in a time warp when it comes to my musical taste because I don't see anything new that's really exciting me. You know, it's it's hard. Yeah, exactly, the urgency and the electricity sometimes is gone. But that the you know the thing is this. I I realize something like there was this generation gap and this 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 age gap yeah. where back in the day if you have this age gap because you were older you figured now well it was done yeah. now the age gap the same age gap is not like that age gap back in the day because you and i, I let me talk for myself and you can figure that out for yourself i'm yeah. a rock and roller i'm a fucking i'm still i'm dying on, with that thing for reasons i know I right. know some of them, but not all of them. But the point is, looking on these new generation, I figured this is their time. But because it's their time, it doesn't mean that I have to always follow because he's young. I don't give a fuck. Right. Because I'm the rock and roll. I started that shit, and I'm still smart enough to hear the sounds from, the, from, the, from today. Right. But they can't relate because they don't know the old past, right? You and I know right. the past, but we also yeah. know the sound. So therefore, we see the difference. They right. don't. Right. But still, I give them the respect, and they have the freedom of their particular generation and their time, even though it sounds fucked up, to my point of view. <laughs> right. But right. I, I give that to them. I mean, like, is, is this what makes you think, okay, but I do something else. I'm listening to all that old stuff, the good stuff, the new stuff that's good, et cetera, and so because I'm still following bands, right? Right. And and crews. I know exactly who is the real deal. The yeah. rest in, I don't care about. They cannot yeah. convince me in their sounds, but I don't have to convince them in the sound that I know. Back in the day, if you were like 50, you were basically dead. Now that's the new thing. Because yeah, you and I, we we were in a period where we felt like this tidal wave of good music, good songs, good bit. Let's 
most of the bands were no fucking joke. It depends on what we're talking about, but still. Right. Now, I don't know, man. I mean, <clears throat> I had crews on my feet. Trying to, to understand you, but like, Jesus, I I want to throw the thing in the dustbin, right? Right. I, it's it's hard. It, but I believe that the, the new generation, this is just their time. It's just sad that they do not understand the whole science of it all. Meaning right. you have this new sound, but try, you, you could be have benefit, profit of checking the old sounds. Sure. And they yeah. don't. Yeah. They like your you guys are old. That's your that's your music. That's like baby boomer music or grandpa's music. Right. Whatever, brother. Right. You do right. not understand. Right. Well, I, and I think a lot of the problem with hip hop too is a lot of it has gotten derivative. I mean, you can only I mean, if someone has something to say, like Kendrick Lamar, and 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 is 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 commentating on the social landscape, like NWA was back in the day. But you're getting a lot of just talking about bitches and money and jewelry and cars and all that stuff. And it's and you know what you know it's funny that you mention this. There was a time where I would say the same thing, but I think the people are so crazy whack, especially yeah. in hot. Yeah. That I'm rather. I'm praying for people uh, shooting people up and, and, and talking about them. That's yeah. how, how, how tough it is. I mean, yeah. I'm like, yo, I'd rather have that because there's electricity there. Yeah. Because music, the thing is with music, if you if you put the limitations in the creation, or should I say, you kind of put boundaries around the create, the create, the creation itself, it yeah. will never harm you. The right. only thing that harms you is you thinking, Oh, he's talking to me. Yeah. He's not. Yeah. This, because this whole thing is nothing but a like a hallucination. Like like yeah. like uh, this is this is all a, a jo not a joke. A, a, there's a different term. Um, it is it is like gas. We yeah. love to inhale it, but yeah. it's still gas. Right. I right. Could, if I will walk on the street. I'm, I know I'm rude boy, but at the same time, I'm not taking the bus and telling people, you know, who I am. Of course not. Right, right, right. It right, has no right. function. It only has a function where I'm on stage, in the rehearsal room, et cetera, et cetera, and in my mind, maybe. Hey, can, but, hey, can I ask you, could you just try to move the phone a little bit so we can get you in frame a little bit? Your 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 connection's getting a little wobbly over there. So. Is it so? It's like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just you're getting a little, you know, you're starting to get a little pixelated when you're moving around and stuff. Yeah, I think that's good right there, I think. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, So I also noticed, too, that when you do some of those songs, like you have a version of No Kid on Mental Floss for the Globe. It's an acoustic version. But when I've seen you guys do it live, uh, uh, it's, it's almost comes across as like a punk song. So I can really see the punk influence. It, uh, where does the punk influence come from? Do you guys all love punk music? Do you love punk music? Yeah. 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 Yeah, you're a fan of punk music? Big time. But especially yeah. the British version. Yeah. The British, what I consider the British wave. Those are the guys that did it's it the funny, best. I'm, I'm talking American, but it's the British wave I love most. Yeah. There are some good uh, punk rock bands in the States. One of the best, in my point of view, was at the drop-in. was one of the best I've ever seen. Yeah. And... Uh, there are more. Henry Rollins was no joke in the. Oh, uh, I love him. You know, uh, you got so many there. But it's funny that I always think about the British wave because I was in Europe, and when the Pistols hit, that basically changed my life. Actually, yeah, it, it took yeah. me three months. It took me actually three months because <laughs> I was only thinking, listening to the King Steely Dan and the Beatles and stuff like that. And then I heard yeah. them, like, and I was very young. Like, Damn, this, this is the end of the world. Yeah. And then later, I figured, no, no, this is very good, actually. And the same with New Wave came behind that, and that was the thing for me, both of them. So, are you? Yeah. Are you uh, able to go uh, back? Uh, uh, when me and you started the interview, can you go back to that spot where you were sitting? I think you were getting a better connection. I think you were getting a better connection now? there. Yeah, you're just and getting a little. You're getting a little pixelated and kind of freezing up on me a little. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe go back to where you uh, are. You sitting in the same place where is when we started? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um. So. Um. 
how did you get through uh how did you get through a musical career as far as like um uh as far as like the trappings of the rock and roll life did you do a lot of partying was there a lot of craziness on the uh, you know like like during your yeah, your, your, your prime way, years it, you can, you cannot really dodge that yeah yeah <laughs> even for a strange I, I, idiotic band like the urban s but i could yeah. personally well i didn't drink okay i didn't smoke i did the other stuff okay okay so so you got pulled into it a little bit it's hard not to though i mean no nah, well we talk about women women were always to me very interesting let me put it that way yeah but the rest i didn't give a hoot about i saw people drink i saw people taking like designer drugs and drugs right didn't give a fuck i just wasn't your thing wasn't your thing so <laughs> so what you guys are doing right now uh going back out there and doing shows uh um and you picked up some great musicians to play alongside you but will we ever see any actual new urban dance squad music or new urban dance squad albums under that name not under that name i can't use the urban dance squad name you can't but okay there is something cooking somewhere but i'm not going to tell you too much okay okay fair enough fair enough fair enough i just like the fact that something's cooking rude boy i just like the fact that something's cooking i'm happy to hear that <laughs> very happy to hear that so uh, so uh uh before you go on stage uh do you have any like uh superstitions pre-show rituals and anything that you do before a show if you look closely to me i i cannot tell you the reason why because i don't want to give that away but if you look close to the early days of the urban dance squad i used to always tie my hands up right okay Remember? yes i do that i do that with gaffer tape now and is there a reason behind why you do it yeah that's a reason why i'm not going to tell you this time. okay okay fair enough fair enough <laughs> that's all right that's all right hey i gotta ask you know i mean I mean, once you drop that hint, it, people would be like, well, why didn't he ask, you know? Um, so what about other musical projects? I know you've done Cold Vein. Uh, uh, is that still very active? In that, in, in yeah, 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 yeah. That's my yeah. main band. That's, my that's your band. main band. Okay. Uh, that's not a project. But I was in, after Urban Dance Sport, I did, uh, uh, geez, uh, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Exo Gentlemen. Yep, yep. Then I went to Club of Eye Eyebrows, which was with Joachim, the drum who's playing now with us again. Um, then I did Fanta Four and the yeah, Guido. Yep, yep. Great Ooh, albums. Uh, now I'm I'm actually really in the cold vein. I'm their spokesperson too, but I okay. don't want to be the spokesperson. <laughs> <laughs> you always seem to end up in this rude boy. You're always the you're always the spokesperson. <laughs> well, they it's I, I don't know. I, I cannot really tell you why, but uh, I, obviously I can. You can wake me up at three o'clock, and 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 I start getting, you know, very philosophical about uh, Tubblestone. Right, that, right. That's why. That's me. Right. That's like uh, something you gotta have, right? It's. it's I don't even you, do effort actually. Also for this, I don't do effort at all. I'm just figuring out. Like if you and I uh, are confronted with each other, I give you the real deal. That's right. all I do. Right, right. So, so uh, uh, I had mentioned earlier what a powerhouse you guys are on stage live. Uh, do you do you yourself, other than playing, do you go out and see a lot of live music as a fan? Oh yeah, yeah. And let me put it this way: I'm very specific. Yeah. Give you an example. When a couple of years ago, Fountains, of D Fountains DC came out, I had the record immediately. I told my girl, was in my new girl, and she, I will stay with her, but that's some extra information where you don't need to. But <laughs> she, um, I, we, we both went to Rotown in Rotterdam, where she basically lives. And I just was in way in the front of that crew. And it was one of the best things. And then I leave the I basically leave the place and go home. I'm very specific. Like Proto Martyr, I saw them at least two times. 
I'm going for Pro Martia and I'm going back home when I've seen them. Right. I did that with Bombino. I go for Bombino and I go away. I'm going, at least I saw Dead Grips from the early days till now, at least five times. Okay. Grips. I'm coming for them. I'm going away. I don't care about the night. I don't care about drinking. I just don't give a fuck. You go I see just, the band you're into. You go see the band you're into. Specifically. Specifically. That's a diehard right there. That's a diehard fan right there. You don't even care the, about who, the, who else is on the bill. You leave no, after the band you came to see. Yeah, it depends because if it's a if if, if it's a, a festival, I might yeah. be checking three guys out that I really love. Right. The rest I care about. Are but there the young funny bands? Thing is whether whether they are new bands, young or just upcoming, it really doesn't matter. To I want to see them. I need to see them. Right, right. I'm specific. I do not go to a Muse concert. Forget it. Right, I'm not, right. I might go to the Stones for the second, third time maybe because I saw them in 82. But the big names, I will not see. I, I just don't give a fuck. I, well, I just don't. Well and, well, and it's gotten crazy. I was just talking to somebody the other day and uh, uh, they had a friend of theirs uh, who just bought Bruce Springsteen tickets? Nosebleed seats, mind you, twelve hundred bucks. Wow. Yeah. What has happened to these guys that used to preach to us back in the seventies about anti-establishment and sticking they to have, the man? And now the look at them; they've all is, gone corporate. They have, everyone's gone corporate. The fun. The but to be honest about it, you're right. But at the same time, we have to understand the whole structure there. Let right. me give an example. Sure. The Red Hot Chili Peppers, I consider I, I met them with Hillel. So yeah. he, they, they 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 checked Rest us and they figured like we are one of the best. Yeah. Right now I saw Red Hot Chili Peppers uh, a month or something ago. And the whole thing made me think about the Rolling Stones in the sense that the whole the whole project is huge and humongous. There's a lot of money involved. Sure. B yeah, big business. So the thing the thing is this. If you know Flea, he had 50 friends working in his company called mm -hmm. the Red Hot Peppers. Yep. They have they get food, they have children, their families to basically to support. And I understand that because back in the day, I know where they're coming from. Right, right. Yeah, sorry if uh, that's okay. Uh, suddenly, you're this older musician that people are depending on. I'm basically lucky. I told you, yeah, because I don't have to do anything for other people. I have friends. If I could give them a job, I'll do it. But I'm not in the situation to give my friends a job, right? So I'm a loner. I'm a free agent in the sense that I walk on stage. I walk off stage. I see my girl. I'm living a life. I buy my records. I have to lay the last Interpol because I'm an Interpol uh, man from the get go, from the day, from 2000. Okay. I have seen her, okay. I've seen her at least five times. So. These are the very important things that I need, but I, 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 it, it, this whole thing is money. It, it's the biggest thing, the biggest industry, the biggest, yeah, company. You know, if you're in yep. a rock band, you're big like Pearl. I don't go to Pearl Jam. I'm sorry. I don't want to see you. Not because no. I hate you. I just don't care. I just don't. Yeah. I'm where. The shit happens. I, I'm where the fire's at. I'm, right. I'm. I love the instigation. I love shit breaks down. People hang on fucking on the side. Uh, uh, um, the side fills. That's what I like. Yeah, yeah. You like a high energy, a real, real show. So, 
Does it drive you crazy then? I've asked other musicians this too. Does it drive you crazy being as that you seem like you really like the authenticity of a live show? You want to see warts and all. You want to see the whole thing in, in, in its real form. Does it drive you crazy when you see these bands now that are kind of half-assing it and using backing vocal tracks and cheating, so to speak, these older bands that do this? It, 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 it depends. Oh, if it's an older band, I, I should shame on you, I would say. But yeah, uh, if it's a new crew, I understand. Yeah, yeah, but it, it depends. I mean, I've seen these new Puritans in 2008 or something with their first record, one of the best records I could recommend you that Beat Pyramid is that called? The, these new Puritans, they're from England. And they used the computer. I, man, it was incredible because it's punk rock basically, even though it's yeah. not punk rock. Right. I want right. to see that and feel that mentality, like that devil may care type of mentality. They're like, I don't, I just don't care. This is what I need to do. That I love that. It could be in right. a slow, like if you, uh, William Tyler, does the name ring a bell? William Tyler, that guitar player from, well, he's, he's on his own. William Tyler. I, I'm not I familiar. Him. No, I'm not familiar. I love, I love him because that the tapestry of playing is incredible. Um, I would go for him, you know. I would see just like I did with Elliot Smith long time ago before he killed himself. I saw him at least yeah, at least one or two times. I saw Sparkle Horse two times. Okay. Mark Lincoln. Yeah. This these people say mean something to me. It's the pain, right. it's the honesty, it's the, the beauty of it all. It's it's so hardcore. The beauty is so hardcore that you just want to need to see it. Right. I mean, I'll go for them. Now, when you're fronting a band, uh, uh, you know, as you did uh, and, and continue to do, but back in the day with Urban Dance Squad, uh, one thing that I noticed, you always put a lot into uh, into your own performance as far as like a lot of movement and a lot of dancing. Does that just come natural to you? Does the music just bring that out of you? Because I'll tell you yeah. what, I'll tell you what, Ruboy, you do a pretty damn good running man. I'll, I'll give you credit there, boy. That's a textbook running man. I'll tell you. Well, that's just a little element that subconsciously I throw in. But the point yeah. is this. In general, I look at the stage. I love to be not actually my favorite, most best comfortable situation is where I didn't see the stage at all. Right. Then I got confronted with it. Yeah. I checked the left and the right and the front and the back and kind of try to feel what the environment is. If it could right. be my new habitat. Right. Habitat. If I get confronted with a with a, like a venue that's packed and they are way up me, that's gonna be even better. Because right, right. that the danger is there, and I love that. Um, anything could happen, but you better be do something, you know. And I, I let myself. I get influenced by what I consider atmosphere, and I always try not to do the same thing. But it's sometimes uh, difficult. But that's my main thing in general: is could I do because. The thing is, if somebody's screaming at me on the left, I might look at him and take that with me. Um, I might fall on the floor. That's good. Yeah. Because it's different. <laughs> I break um, the microphone. It's how yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like that, though. I mean, you know, I like that authenticity and that rawness of seeing of seeing the real live experience. You know, I don't want someone to try to pull the wool over my eyes and fool me and, and use little tricks. I'd rather see it honestly, even if it isn't, you know, up to snuff uh, as to where it sounds just like the record. You know, I mean, I don't need that. You know, you have you have these bands. They are extremely good at that. And it works. Yeah. But a crew like like Urban Dashboard or even in Colvain, they. Uh, the guitar play is no joke, by the way. Um, Hans, it, it's about some explosive moment. The uh, explosive moments that particular day, you 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 seek for that actually, but you have to be open. You have to be, uh, should I say, right. blank. There, there's not 
it, the slate got to be clean every time you do this. You need to know the songs, by the way, but the slate must be clean every time you do it because you never know, you know? I mean, it, it could be a different drawing better than the last one. <laughs> you draw something, you know? Right, I mean, right. But you have to be completely clean. What does it feel like now? What does it feel like now when you're getting up on the stage and you're revisiting those songs? Though, I mean, I, I mean, do they mean do they mean just as much to you now? I mean, it, yeah, is it the same experience. Especially, especially brainstorm on the UDS to give an example yeah. with DNA. It's it, it's I feel if it's done well, and the guys are instructed well and they know exactly their homework, which they do with these particular songs right now. If you, I know it sounds like back in the in the day, the the, the heaviness of it all, the uh, DNA behind the turntable, the random patterns. Uh, it, that's the electricity. So I love that. Yeah, I love the. Yeah. But um, you could never be one on one the same thing. But it's about the electricity that's the same thing the electricity the the, the 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 tension of it all but it must be done right you you i, I always wanted to be in the vortex of, of it all and it that happens and that means that the crew is okay but with dna that's that's the thing that's the thing man because when i hear him i know oh, it's going to be cool yeah i yeah. Tell every time i tell him if you feel like you don't want to play it by the book just don't because I know it's going to be okay. It, yeah. I I have faith in him because yeah. I know who he is. I know what he can do. And I tell these people where we're working with, like they starting to realize, yeah, Blue Boy was right for getting him because they, at first they thought, not really. I said, yes, he's the one we need because he's the master. And now they're getting used to him. Not only that, they love him. and And that's a beautiful thing. So in that sense, what they consider urban dance squad is it's it's the same ghost but in a different in a different shell yeah yeah now these new guys that you have playing with you where do you find these new musicians to you know to, to take those spots of the guys that used to be in there do you hold auditions do you pre previously know these guys auditions i never did no is the, the point is this no that's for other people the point is this maybe dna did that and figured out before I asked him that there was no crew to be found that yeah. he could do that same thing. Right. But the thing was, I was asked in 2015 to, um, to do a tribute Nirvana tribute 25th anniversary of Nevermind. And I was honored because this particular crew was green lizard. They mo in general, the original lineup was three brothers. They're small dudes, but, now they all three are gone. I don't know why. And I was a guest there with the guitar player. And uh, the drummer and the bass player were from Green Lizard, the, the, the latest edition. Yep. So I played with them. And then they asked me to do Urban Asquad songs. I looked at them and said, well, okay, if you like. Then I get this France thing, right? This question from all the way from France. But all bookers there, they wanted to see me. They never forgot me. But it was only me, except one. This under one condition, I had to play at least eighty percent Urban Asquad song. So I made yeah. it hundred. I went back to that crew. I said, "You, you really want to do this?" Because I wasn't even thinking about it. Right. I told you I was a strange. I'm a strange guy. <laughs> so they, 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 they said, "Yeah, man, we want to help you, and we like the songs because we always been into Urban Asquad. We want to do it." And it deserves to be played. Okay. So then the homework begins because you have to better be sure that you know the stuff. But it can never be one on one Tresmanas because he was a cat. There's no words for him. But what you can do is catch the electricity of it all. And to a certain point, Tresmanas knows about it and heard the songs. Yeah. And he said that. Uh, Oh, God damn it. I wish I did it like that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's got his stamp of approval then. He likes it. Yeah. Yeah, he likes it. The and, only and... thing we cannot do, and he's right, I cannot use Urban Nascot as a name. Right. Because the, with the original five, right? Me and DNA will come with a different name. I already have the name. I, I will not tell you. 
But right now it's Rupert plays UDS with DNA because they asked me, and I don't care, man. I, for all I care is if it's DNA, blah, blah. And then me with small uh, a line of notes, you know, root boy, whatever. I just not that type of guy. As a matter of fact, I like it to be downplayed because I see the freedom in that. So I know you won't release the name right here, but are you saying right here on Pod Scum on my show that there could possibly be another fully realized band under a different moniker, but still doing yeah. the same style of music? Yeah. I'm, I'm excited, lying. rude boy. I'm excited, buddy. I'm excited. But the thing is, life is life, right? So I'll right. be honest with you. Yeah. And at the same time, just because it's not into fruition yet. Right. I have to be very careful. Sure. But intention is spot on. That's yeah. my our intention. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what happens, right? I right. told you because otherwise I would have told you, forget it. And then right. you know what happens. Right. But I didn't right. tell you that. I told you something else. And will we see any of these shows, uh, any of the ones you're currently doing now, or anything that you will do that could be uh, in that same vein of Urban Dance Crust stuff? Will we see this come here to the States for, for the United if you, States? If you, the thing is that I'm working with people that are independent. Yeah. And little by little, baby step by baby step, we'll right. get there. Yeah. But if anybody in the States could help us, they want to see this because yeah. we bring this hundred percent and i know it sounds a bit corny but the point is this i would never have said to you that we are capable to be on any stage if it wasn't the case right right i'm telling you we'll rip the shit out we, i know it doesn't really matter who it is now because i'll take them out i'll just yeah. take them out. you can tell i them. love that attitude i love that that's very so, punk rock right there i love that attitude that's no but great. the thing is the thing is this everything is honesty if i if I'm playing around with you, you find out. Yeah. If I don't, then you know I said it before. Yeah. This very important. I'm very sure about this. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I might people might be in shock to right. see to certain and see certain things. Right. The bureaucrat of Flacker Street. <laughs> yeah. Like a brainstorm, even do a little mean deeper shade of soul better than basically we ever did. Just tell me, man, because we do it. For any fans out there uh, who are listening or watching this, I should say, uh, who who now have seen this interview and do go back uh, and, 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 and unearth that Urban Dance Squad stuff, is there anything that you would want any new fans to know or could tell them about that music? It, it's hybrid music. It's music where the this is basically, I don't care what people say because... DNA and I make a difference because it's a true MC from the hip hop culture, yeah, being frontman in a traditional band, and DNA as a DJ instrumentalist working with all these other instrumentalists. Right, right. That makes a difference. It's it's not joke, it's no joke, it's not a gimmick, it's it's you better live like this because you're going to fall on the stage as soon right. as the whole thing is alive. Right? right. That's all I need. want them to know. It's hybrid music. We believe in so many things without giving you the cliche crap uh, in, in, in like, like trying to explain in our explanations why we'll do it. I, and that's what I'm proud of. Most of the time when I hear people say, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. With us, not, I'm in the crew. Yeah, right. Right. Which means that I'm a human being. I have my flaws in life, but about this particular thing, not really, because right. I'm going to walk on stage and I have to deliver and be be understand this: that once I'm on stage, I not only want to deliver to deliver, but I can deliver. That's the right, thing. right. And I know the whole crew can. I got right. a hell of a bass player, a hell of a drummer. A hell of a guitar player, and we got master on the turntables, grandmaster DNA, and DNA makes the difference to my point of view. And and this new endeavor uh, uh, going forward. Now we know that obviously Magic Stick Trace Manos will not be a part of it. Are there any plans to to, to still try to get Sil back into the band at all, Silvano? Or do you think that ship has sailed? Let me put it this way: I'd rather ask DNA if he if DNA would come to me. I said, Patrick, why why don't we ask Sil? I know it sounds strange, but look, 
No problem. Yeah. Because he's asking me. Right. But I'm not going to do it anymore by myself because I gave him that opportunity a long time ago. Right, right, right. And, uh, listen, maybe I should tell you this story because it's it's going to be as an epilogue in my book as okay. explanation. But I hope you have bear, can bear with me. I'll try sure, to be as short as I can. And when Tres quit it in 1999, 2000, in the beginning, I did not understand because he was calling me while I was doing groceries and I didn't hear. I thought he was an idiot. And then later, the drummer of all people told me, listen, I know what he's saying. He felt that he couldn't leave Urban Dance Watch because that's his crew, but he couldn't do it anymore with the type of press in Holland. He felt that we were underestimated and he felt that this whole circus he was tired of that. So in 2005, to our big surprise, he wanted to do these three shows or four shows in Europe and Holland. <laughs> so we did, and we blasted it. Then in 2012, 13, people asked us for a lot of money to come back. We didn't. And, um, well... Also, Billy Corgan, who happens to be a friend for me uh, since 80, in the 80s, he told me that was at the same time. He said, Patrick, from in 2000 already, he told me, you get need to get your crew together because you were the first. I know. And he had these uh, ideas about either making uh, uh, like a compilation album done by all different uh, producers and remixes. Or old that same idea, but then with five new el songs that we just made up, or a complete new album. And um, I told this to the crew, and I they were not responsive. Then I went in 2014. <coughs> I told Press again. He said, "You don't need to play because he didn't want to play like so many ske uh, big schedule. He likes to have these." like these little shots, right? Like one there, one there, and then a whole year, nothing. I said, you don't, you can do that. But think about Billy Corgan. I come again on the table because in 2040, Billy Corgan told me in Amsterdam, I was the whole time with him. You got to talk to your boys, get them together because I'm prepared to help you guys. I hear no answer. So I figured... And I'm telling you right now, in 2040, I needed the money because I had some tax problems. Then I said, brothers, I think I'm going to quit. If you want to make a record, let me know. But right now, those 2014 shows for a lot of money, I'm not going to do. Stuck by your but, guns. Yeah. Well, I have one rule. If you feel, if you feel unhappy about something, don't do it. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I needed that money. Right. I, I needed that money. We've all been there, brother. We've all been there. I mean. So my life is difficult because I'm a real musician. That's all I can say. My life is difficult because I'm a real musician. I'm right. not JC. Right. He's rich. <laughs> not many I, of us are. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's my answer to you. So this is also the reason why... I'll, I, I blame Silvano, especially the drummer, that he was fucking quiet like a coward to tell his friend, Tress, to finally open up and say yes or no. And they they were looking at the same time I'm asked I asked Tress for the so many for the millions of times. They didn't answer. They were scared to say something. I don't know what their problem is. And then I figured I, I don't want to do this uh, for a while. These people are old. Yeah, there's old yeah. men. I'm tired of old men in that sense. Yeah, you you can grow old in the right way, but you can also grow old in the wrong way. And I'm right. not, I'm not going right. for the latter. So fuck them. I mean, if you want to do something, you know where to find me. If you don't, I'm going to live another life. Right. I'm going to do other things. Right, right. I I waited for Urban Dance Squad since 1999, but all in 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 you know all peace and quietness and this time 
Billy Corgan asked me since 2000 to do something. And in 2014, I felt like I must be, I, sh I felt ashamed because this dude was more serious about the urban dance court than the urban dance court itself, themselves. And I, I kind of felt embarrassed about it. Yeah, yeah. But because now Billy Corgan is not asking me. Right, right, right. <laughs> Well, he hasn't done much himself recently, though, Billy Corgan, though. The, the well, Smashing he's, he's, Pumpkins have been pretty quiet. Yeah, but he's involved in uh, these uh, full-time professional uh, wrestlers. He's into he the wrestling. Five, yeah. yeah he's five, he got five wrestlers, yeah. and he got the key room. So I think he's going to – he got his family. So I think he still makes music, but yeah. he will do it in the right – in a different structure, right? So yeah. not like yeah. back in the past, like back in the days. But he would, you know, be all out there. I think he has a different uh, approach uh, of it, on it all. So, so if people want to find Rude Boy, you're still doing the Cold Vein stuff. You're doing. Okay, uh, you, uh, you're I'm doing. Going the, I'm going for the second album. <laughs> Are and you I'm, really? making, I'm making my solo record right now. And you're making we'll a solo take, record under. Yeah. The, uh, are you making the solo record under the Rude Boy name? Yeah, it's Rude Boy, but. The title is a different one because it's Rude Boy, but um, you know me. If it's like this Friday, it's my own solo record. I want to give it something else. But I'm telling you, I have the beats and the songs, and I'm dwelling with D another friend of mine, DJ DCS, who used to work for Kiss FM for two years back in the States. That dude is, is a, is a no-joke dude. He's a true hip-hop DJ. I'm going to work with him. So what will this solo album sound like? Will this sound more hip-hop or will this sound more uh, Cold Vein? It's, it's basically hip-hop. It's not hip -hop. Cold vein -ish, But okay. I, one song sounds like a clash, god damn it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> DNA heard my beats. Yeah. To everyone, he said, fucking good. You got Concept. the stamp of approval from, from the man. Concept way very good he said he was very curious where he was going to because he heard my ideas well listen brother i tell anybody that'll listen man that, that if they've missed the boat on urban dance squad and there's really no missing the boat because nowadays we can always go back and rediscover that stuff but i mean you know i, I like i said earlier i've been flying the flag for you guys for years Thank I, you I, so much. I, I, I'm, 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 I, I physically get sick my, to my stomach thinking about how big you guys should have been. I look at other bands that have come along and gotten so big, and then I watch those old clips of you guys on stage and 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 doing TV spots and everything, and I just think, how the hell did this fucking band not get huge? I tell you, a, 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 a part is our own fault. It keeps because me up at night. It keeps me up at night, Rude Boy. I'm not going to lie. Is, uh, <laughs> let me put it at the right moment. Yeah. We did the wrong thing. Yeah. Yeah. At the wrong moment, we did the right thing. Right. It doesn't work <laughs> like that. It just, I t you know, I know, like, I, I know my legacy and I know what street PR is. I'm a right. master. But they, these people don't. I, right. I will put DNA out of it because... DNA is supposed to be, to my point of view, I always said that maybe the richest guy of the urban escort he could have been because that dude is different. Yeah, yeah. That people have no understanding about this guy. And I'll be honest, I had, he, he fucked me up two, at least two times. But the point is this. Inside, if he wasn't that um, hippie, nah, he's not a hippie. It, it, if he wasn't that from the other side, if if his mentality was focused on himself, like but not so lazy, right? He was the richest man of us all. Yeah, because the dude is different. I'm telling, trying to tell everybody all the time. I'll be just, I'm testifying here. Yeah, this dude yeah. is different. He's the guy. He lived in Suriname as a white dude. So that's the reason why we do not like what Silvana is saying, because Silvana had a problem always with black. Like, I believe in black people, but I believe in people, which means black and white. Right. Silvana will always say, yeah, well, the black cost this and that. I'm like, shut up about the black cost because you do not understand the black cost. So that was always a stick. Then 
the latest time I gave an interview, in all honesty, because of the woke culture in Holland, where they felt like everybody who happens to be white should be on their knees, which is absolutely bullshit. Right. You know. So right. I told them right. to fuck off. And this dude is, you know, so that's he got mad about it. I said, no problem, man. That's that's how it is. And DNA had the same problem with him. But it's 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 DNA who happens to be the most universal guy because yeah, he was yeah. he was in South Africa, he was in Johannesburg, he was in all the the the, the how do you call those uh, trench towns? Yep, he gets he around. Dead. He gets around. Okay. He gets around. I actually just saw on Facebook he got into a little fender bender there when he was traveling around in his uh his, his camper there. Yeah. Yeah, he cracked it up a little bit there. He did a little damage to the camper there, but thankfully he's okay. So that's that's that him and his lady are okay. So that's good. But that's true. true. Yeah. So listen, brother, I could sit here and talk to you all day. I like to, you know, I like to end the show on a, on a much lighter note. And I'm not going to get this chance very often. You know, I know it's late there for you or whatever. You've been gracious with your time or whatever. But how many times am I going to get the chance to say that I got the flow with Rude Boy? So I'm going to kick a little. I'm going to kick a little deeper shade of soul. Okay. Okay, cool. And you, jump, and you jump in with me, okay? Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Ready? All right. Uh, here we go. Uh, surprise, surprise. So you so rock, you rock your, your eyes. eyes. New UDS, so cool as eyes. Hear the vibes, Dan. <laughs> the stupid fly. Ducks categorize as what? As hard tries. <laughs> we know why. It. No, wow, we're <laughs> occupied. I love that. I mean, come the on. Put up your styles and these are higher. Profiles are low as soon as, as, soon we, as go, we go. With a brief straight from a deeper shade of soul. <laughs> oh, man, the best. Deeper shade of soul. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. That's and the Ray jam. Man. I'll tell you what, man. I remember that video, man. And and MTV was playing it a, a, a pretty good amount of times, too. I mean, yeah. they really were getting you guys out there, man. I that, mean, that was. That was the moment that I told you my that A and R dudes they were the best I've ever seen. And after yeah. that, what happened was that most of them they go to different companies, right? Yeah. And yeah. that's where you die because the new the substitute is basically an idiot sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And that's what happened because I already had a lack of uh, trust in certain people in the industry. But with yeah. Tom Ennis and Marky Diamond, that was one of the best things. Yeah, yeah. And well, that, listen, that's, man. I'm glad you're still out there doing it, man. I hope we get to see it somewhere here in the States sometime soon, man. I mean, you know, I, I would love that. I think, And I think a lot of people here would love that because when I go and look at your stuff on YouTube, the fans are still there. The fans are still there. They're in the comment section. You know, the views are there. You know, I think that's, people. That's, that's what Billy Corrigan told me a long yeah. time ago. I said, man, you you got to step up with this shit. I said, yeah, I will. I think the people have caught up now. I think the people have caught up now to where you guys were way back then. You know, you were like years ahead of people, I think. And that was part of the big problem, I think. You know? <laughs> That's how it is. Well, we yeah. all make some mistakes. I know, you know. I know. I know. I appreciate all the time you spent with me, man. I'll tell you what, man. You are no duck. You are no Clyde. <laughs> and, you are no, and you are no kid. Huh? Word. Word. <laughs> Neither am I, I guess. I mean. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> It was listen, a, it was nice. I really it was appreciate the time, man. It was great talking to you. Hopefully, we can get up again sometime and do it again, man. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I wish you all the luck with everything going forward, man. Everybody's everybody's calling me now, so I yeah. just need to pick up now because yeah. people are calling me. It's kind of important. Also. Yeah. I'm glad. I, listen, I'm glad you're still out there doing it, man. And I hope I get to see it live someday because I, 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 yeah. I, I, did, I did never get to see it live back in the day. Some Sometimes it will happen. Yeah, I believe that too. I'm keeping a good thought about it. Yeah. Thank you, man. It was great talking to you, Rude Boy. The great Rude Boy Remington. I appreciate the time, brother. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Next time. Yes. Bye. yes. I'll see you soon, buddy. Take it easy. Bye-bye, buddy. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. And there you have it, folks. The great Rude <laughs> Boy. There he is. Look at him. He's still, still giving us that smile. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I really do. Yeah, thank you, buddy. No problem. Bye. 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 Hey, I can't even close this. See, see, now I love that my audience is getting to see this. Rude boy can't work <laughs> technology. <laughs> I can't even close it. <laughs> is there a red phone down at the bottom? Is there a picture of a red phone? Let me see. I think that's where it is.
Man, no, it's gone. <laughs> do we still got him? <laughs> we do. I'm still, <laughs> I'm still in there. Wait, He's still wait. here. We can't, look at this. We can't get rid of Rude Boy. Is such a pod scum fan. We can't get rid of him. <laughs> That's how I'm it keeping is. it going. I'm keeping it going until Rude Boy's gone. My God, man. Let I me love check this. this. Because normally I don't. <laughs> I don't have normally they will fucking use just, just quit the line, right? Rude boy still Wait. giving us great audio here. Yeah. Oh man. One moment. You keep us on here this long, you should be rapping for us, Rude Boy. <laughs> <laughs> but I have so many people who I need to do this because I need to go. Yeah. Because somebody's I at least two phone calls. My girl's calling me. Wait, I'll see this. Yeah, uh, you'll figure it out. You'll figure it out, and our audience is gonna watch as you do. Yeah, word. Instilling a word. <laughs> Fucking A. I never saw this be. Wait. Jesus, wait. <laughs> uh, uh, close. Why is he not? It's not Are you on your phone? Yeah. Yeah. There he is again. Look at this. Well, well, I, think, I, I love think... this, though. I love this. This is making for a great video that we can't get rid of Rude Boy. I love it. I love it. And the fans are going to love it. I'll tell you that, man. <laughs> One moment, one there moment. There he is, there he is. Well, we're going to eventually say goodbye to him. Yeah. There he goes, there he goes. The great rude boy. See that, man? We got to see how uh, how ham-handed he was with the technology. I get it, man. I get it. Being almost 50 years old, I'm no good with it either, man. But anyways, the great rude boy Remington just spent a lot of time with us right there from legendary, legendary band urban dance squad also as a band called cold vein uh joining us all the way from holland so we appreciate that um rude boy one of the all-time great front men go back and check out urban dance squad man i mean i like i said in the interview countless times to him i've been flying the flag for them for so long what an eclectic sound what a fusion of just just great genres. I mean, one of the best bands that unfortunately didn't reach the pinnacle that other bands did, but certainly, certainly should have. I mean, it's almost criminal. So I hope you guys enjoyed that, man. Uh, this is Rex Ruger, the son of glam, signing off and telling everybody out there, thank you for watching Podscum. Thank you for spending some time with us. And uh, like I always say, Take it easy and keep it sleazy. See ya.